months of a long waiting, but he's 70 with two. Daddy, me know, who could there come 70? Who could she meet you? No, who? A lot of the more months of it. Tell me, but he is 70 with daddy, me put it to sharing, but he's 70 old day. Ah, Timo, Rimu, Dum, Dum, She's the best wife ten your lady laye. More that break in news if doctor to suffer me pay one to go to by Munumidu. Be a woman Jackie Marshe. Two, one to re or do Timoni to coo in Toku, Peco, or more. Me, there's a canic or gone to him as soon or came my merry pill, my show too. Let me just talk about this man, Abiola Jimobi. He's a very, very open man. He doesn't hide anything. He says it as it is. And I, exactly like, like you rightly said, that was what he did the first day. But that is his personality. That is him. You know, he, he doesn't lie about anything. Sometimes, you know, I just look him into the eyes when he's saying things. You know, somebody comes in and he's telling... I said, can say why are you looking at me like that you don't want me to say my wife is telling me i shouldn't say it but you know that is him but under that is an amazing guy rising up he got to national world there was no godfather there was nobody there but he rose by the time we were getting him i think he got he started work there in 1979 and just a few days before we got married he got a new he was promoted he had to he was the first nigerian to take over from a white guy consumer products manager so when we got married on friday on saturday we came back to lagos on sunday he started work on monday there was no honeymoon because he just that's that's the kind of man he is he just couldn't understand honeymoon for what flurry every day is honeymoon even his proposal was very unromantic he's an ibadon man <laughs> but i mean and i didn't have you know by then by the time he was proposing he was you see he was more of my friend than falling in love. So this was a man that I was used to talking to every day. And as I said, you just thought, you yeah, can't do without this guy. So by the time he was proposing, I mean, for me, it was even irrelevant. Because he was my friend. I tell him everything. We do everything together. You know, always something to talk about. Even now, after 39 years of marriage, we still have something to talk about every day. Then one day, your friend comes home and said, He's going into politics. He wants to do politics. You see? Uh, and you were completely... Because I couldn't understand. He was meant to be my friend. I mean, even if you are going to do something, I have no objection. But we should agree. As friends, you know, you tell me, we discuss it, but not for you to just come from nowhere. And for the first time, I think that was 23 years. Yeah, 20, 22 years. We were 22 years together. That was 2002 yeah, been, when he retired. Yeah, yeah, I had another, I saw another side of him. That I've never seen. I thought there's nothing I would ask for him, from him that he won't do. And he now told me that he's made up his mind and he's doing it. Now, in fact, initially, I, I didn't believe it. I just thought, no, it's not him. And I acted the typical way. I said, no, I'm not in support. Hoping that, saying that, he's going to withdraw and, you know. And you threw everything at him the silent treatment. Everything. 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 <laughs> he didn't bulge. He didn't. And he came to Ibadan without us as a family. Mm. He was here for like three months. He calls, how are you? And that was it. But eventually, December, I just thought to myself, swallow your pride. You, you did turn around. So. I did. I came, I came, because I just saw that I've lost this time. The chapter on the life of the wife of a politician was very insightful for me mm -hmm. because it helped me to see that, you know, it's not what we watch on TV mm. or read on the pages of newspaper. Mm -hmm. It's real. 
the challenges are real. Very, very. Somebody who is married to. Very. Uh, you, you explained here how it took a toll on your family, your marriage at some point in time. You had to adjust. It was difficult. A lot. It was always away, not at home. Mm. Your daughter missed him. My six-year-old. Yes. She said, no daddy in this house anymore. We only have a senator. Because she didn't see a dad. Her definition of a dad was missing. She just saw a senator that comes in, you know, by the time he comes, she's in bed. By the time she's going to school in the morning, he's sleeping. Were you trying to explain to people here? Yes. That when you find yourself in that situation, support him. He, I'm sure he was missing us as well. He was missing spending time with his child because we had that child when he was almost, he was almost, she's 22 this year, so... He was probably 38 and I was, no, he was 48 and when I was 38. You know, you agree with me that was late mm -hmm. to have a child. So she was a child that we both wanted to dot on, give her as much time as we could afford. So for him not to be able to spend time with her, I'm sure he was missing it as well. I didn't support him immediately, but I was playing one of my tantrums and I always got away with it. But for the first time, I didn't get away with it. So when your husband draws the line, just give up. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Give up. If I had pressed further, I don't know what would have happened. Because he would have still done what he wanted to do and I won't be there. If I didn't come in December, because the elections were in March. If I didn't come and he had that election without me, where do I fit in? Still doesn't make me less his wife, but it won't be a supportive wife. I will still be his wife, but not a wife that was there for him. What you described when you moved to Abuja, mm. when you moved to Abuja, what I read here was just misery. You, you, it was misery. I hate the you. place. I still hate it. Abuja. You, you, you that's, did, that's, that's my own. I, I didn't like you it. You didn't feel alive. Very lonely place. Yeah. Very miserable life. Because I went with a man. Is it what a lot of wives of senators and I don't know. I mean, some, you know, for me, I had a, I don't know. I had a relationship with this guy. My friend, don't forget. Always talking together, always there together. He takes me out for dinner. We go out. We take a walk every evening, but that stopped. It stopped completely. So they have their meetings in the night. He comes awesome. back early in the morning, he wants to sleep. So am I going to start talking to him when he comes? So what you describe there is, is not the most um, difficult thing for the spouse of somebody in public service. I mean, you've been in public service for so many years. You were in public service for so many years as mm. spouse of senator, governor, and all that. MD. Was that the most difficult? That was the most for me. Because I was missing my friend. He wasn't there. You know, it depends on the relationship. Not every woman will go through that or feel that way. But this is a man that I had a very close relationship with. And we had a system, you know. We talk in the morning. We talk when he comes at night. We take a walk for one hour every day. And all that was gone. Hmm. You simply missed your friend. I missed my friend. That was it. I missed my friend. He thought for his passion. My husband took ill precisely, I think, on the 17th of May, and on the 27th of May, and he was hospitalized. And I was reading in the papers that the governor of Korea, His Excellency, he is the leader of the state. I have no reason not to lie. He didn't call me, but he claimed he did. I don't have your number. I've never spoken to you. I'm just putting a record straight.